So this is the HD Zero goggle. Pretty interesting that we get to take a look at it before it's finalized as a community and offer suggestions, things like that. And by the way, the, the goggle is open source. Uh, so the mechanical design files are available on Thingiverse um, by the link that I put up and posted. And it's going to be continue to be updated as the design is updated. Uh, right now, the files are just uh, STL and step. The step file is a uh, editable solid file, but it doesn't have the design history. And then the STL files are there for you to directly 3D print. I believe that mechanical designer is using um, UGNX to do the design. So when the design's finalized, I think uh, the raw uh, UGNX part files with the design file history will be made available public uh, also. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, pretty darn unimpress unprecedented for a manufacturer to make their CAD available for everyone. Now, I haven't been actually doing the CAD. I've just been reviewing the, uh, the step exported files from the mechanical designer. I am a mechanical engineer myself, and I do have some training with doing uh, injection molded parts and stuff like that. So I've been giving my experience uh, as a pilot and both a and as an engineer to, to help make this you know the best goggle that the community has ever had. Um, th I've been trying to give them a lot of uh, practical suggestions to make this a great everyday carry goggle with a lot of features that make it easy to set up and tear down, um, pack away without having to mess with the antennas, connectors, and stuff like that. So let's dive in and take a look at the, the features. So on the goggle, there's a sliding power switch. I was a big advocate for this because I really don't like having to uh, hold down a button for an undetermined amount of time to turn something on and off. Just simple slide on, slide off is what I wanted. Um, so that's what they've implemented here. And so you can, you can just flick this into the on position and it'll stay on um, until you flick it to the off position. So if you wanted to have it operate uh, where it just turns on when you plug in, and you could just leave this in the on position. It does appear that there's enough space um, with the barrel jack when it's actually installed that it's not gonna touch this switch. So uh, I hope that those concerns are allayed because um, I don't think that there's space to move this inside the uh, design and uh, I'll, I'll open this up soon so you can see it. Moving uh, to the front, there's these SMA ports. The SMA ports are um, a little bit unique. On the top, it's not so much recessed. It should fit most any antenna. On the sides, though, it is recessed a little bit, and that's to give you a more low-profile uh, outline when the antennas are installed so that you can throw this in your bag without having to take the antennas off and have them get knocked around as much. Uh, Carl has tested several different antennas with this to make sure that you can screw them in and out. Um, I think a tool might be provided uh, to wrench the SMAs down uh, if it is an issue. And the other thing he can do is he can make the uh, actual SMA connector longer if that is required. So there's a few options if it ends up being uh, too short and too difficult for people. But the intention is to uh, make it so that you don't have to be taking these antennas on and off um, when you take it in and out of the bag. Also, you can uh, mount up some slide-on patch antenna accessories that will slide onto these rails here. Uh, and then we'll thread onto this SMA jack and uh, that'll be nice and low profile. So moving across here, um, there's a fan. And the way this fan's designed is it's, it's to prevent rain from falling into the main circuit board um, by not having an opening directly on the top. Instead, it's going to pull in air from the sides. Also, the fan is soft mounted. All the fans in the goggle are soft mounted, and I'll show you a, um, a close up of that. But that's what this piece is. This is uh, just excess that'll be trimmed off. It's a piece of rubber. 
Um, moving over to here, this is like a rotating wheel for navigating the menu system, and then a select button. And then while we're looking at buttons, uh, this is like a, a fan speed button that you can press, or it could be maybe reprogrammed to do other things in the user interface. Coming over to the side, there's this um, accessory port expansion bay. We'll take a look at that in more detail later. Um, this is a, a fan exhaust right here, and on the other side, there's, there's another fan exhaust. So moving back to the back side, um, this is a metal uh, clip, a metal uh, bracket for a goggle strap. So that'll give it a little bit of class, I guess. This is a bit of an air intake right here uh, that'll help supplement the air intake from the top of this fan that's blowing down. Uh, this is the faceplate, and I guess, that, yeah, there's going to be two different faceplates available. Uh, this is more of a flat faceplate for, uh, let's say, Asian faces, and then there's a more curved faceplate for uh, European faces. There's an optional uh, diopter prescription lens insert right here that was added by uh, community request. It is a little bit different size than the uh, one that is in the Fat Shark style goggles, um, but that was re that was necessary in order to um, cover the entire area of the bigger optic. So that kind of covers the outside. Um, oh, now we can get into the I.O. on the bottom. Um, I might be getting some of these wrong, but I think this is the head tracker port this is the firmware update port. This is the, um, I think, the headphone microphone combo jack. I think this is HDMI input. This is HDMI output, then SD card. And um, this might be like a AV input, if I'm not mistaken. So it'd be like for a ground station for analog. So that's the I.O. Let's take a look at this uh, door here. So we can take that off. And then uh, this is a like an auxiliary expansion port. And I believe what we've got on here are the nine pins for the analog video um, module for controlling the analog module, uh, providing power and control signals. Um, and I believe it also has some uh, data pins for a Wi-Fi uh, transmitter, that uh, a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi access point transmitter. And the purpose of that is to um, allow streaming the video feed to your phone. Um, I could also see it being useful for maybe uploading files to the to the goggle. Um, without having to use the SD card or maybe downloading files from the from the goggle without using um, the SD card. You could just connect to this goggle with maybe your phone and, and pull the files. So that would be nice. It would also be nice to do uh, firmware updates uh, pushed to the, the goggle over the Wi-Fi connection. So those are some of the things that we could add on, I guess, as a community through software um, with open source software. Uh, for for connectivity and updating and, and stuff like that. All right, let's take the the lid off of this thing, so to speak, and look at what's inside. So when we make that transparent, we can see how the circuit boards are laid out. Uh, this is like the main circuit board with the, the main uh, CPU and stuff on it. And then there's the I.O. board here. It's got like the HDMI input and stuff. And then there's another I.O. card over here. And then on either side, there's the RF boards. So the way HD0 works is there's actually two uh, RF receivers that in each receiver takes in two antennas. And then in the uh, kind of the application processor side, 
uh, slash FPGA, it's combining and mixing the, the two uh, receiver signals together with some algorithm that Carl described. Um, I, I'm not really sure how it works. Uh, then there's another board here for this um, wheel and I.O. expansion, and then another PCB here for this button, um, and the DC input jack and the power switch. And here you can see just how tight the, the space is and, and how uh, I don't think he had room to move this DC connector um, over to where the switch is. So he does have some room down here, um, but I guess he didn't want to mount like the DC barrel jack off of the main board here. So it is what it is. Uh, also pretty interesting that we can see right here is how this and uh, how this fan is mounted. So this fan is mounted on a like a rubber sleeve for soft mounting and also to kind of solve the problem of well, how do you how do you mount this fan into this uh, tight case. So there's some rails uh, that this rubber sleeve slides onto and kind of just uh, wedges itself in between the top and bottom shells that way. So that'll provide good vibration isolation uh, to keep the screens from vibrating and to keep the noise down. So that's a good thing. And then same exact uh, setup over on this side. Uh, let's take a look at what this looks like. So this is how the uh, top fan is mounted. It's mounted with a similar like a rubber uh, mounting system uh, where it's it's kind of like in between the plastic right here and then this part is uh, below the plastic of the top and then it would be cut with scissors so this piece right here is removed and same with this this upper part would be removed and then you have a kind of a floating soft mounted uh, top fan that will again remove uh, sound uh, and vibration coming off of this fan, so it should be nice and quiet. So here you can see the split uh, for the airflow. So this this little cavity right here is the uh, duct to uh, cool the front of the lenses uh, to keep the uh, fog away from the lens. And then uh, this part here is all uh, going to be cooling the the main circuit board and then blowing air across the circuit board um, and then down kind of through here to get exhausted out. Um, there's also an air intake right here in this gap that's going to be pulling air kind of uh, this direction and then sucked out again out this outlet and the same on this side. You're pulling air in and then sucked out and pulling an air here and pulling it across the board and then sucking it out this way. So that's the theory anyway. Should be pretty interesting to see that in practice. Uh, Carl told me that it is running very quiet um, in the prototype that he has, so that's really good to hear. You know, more fans might mean more noise, but he's able to control the speed of these fans and get them you know, to the right RPM to get the right airflow. Um, and then they're all soft mounted, so that should help a lot too. So make that uh, solid again, and then we'll make the, the bottom transparent, and then you can see it from the other direction. So this is the um, exhaust fan on, on this side. And the exhaust fan on the other side, you can see they just uh, they just drop in. So that'll be good. Um, and I guess these circuit boards are all kind of drop in into place and be bolted down. So maybe a pretty easy assembly to do. It'd be pretty cool with our homemade, you know, 3D printed designs of this case. Um, if it's nice and simple to work on, where you just have to take maybe uh, what is it? three screws out. I think so there's a center screw here, 
I think this is another screw and this is another screw. So we take those out and then uh, take this, this bottom cover off and then we'd see this area here. Um, as you can see, the optics subassembly is, is removed and uh, that, I guess that's an agreement that Carl's got with the, uh, the designer for the optics to not share that CAD. Uh, but as you can see, like uh, there's there's quite a bit of CAD in here that he is able to share, so that's pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about this analog slash uh, Wi-Fi expansion module thing. I'm gonna show that now. So this is the card uh, that would kind of plug into this port here to give the additional capability, and this is the rather large uh, header pin section. Uh, to receive the analog module. And let's see, this is what that looks like with the analog module. And you can see it's pretty darn deep. Um, I'd really like to make this not as thick, and I have a suggestion for how we can do that. So if we take a look at this, uh, there's a ton of empty space right here. And it, it's pretty much all because of this. Uh, this header connector for the analog pins. I think that we can move this connector to the other side uh, with what's called a, uh, let's see, a dual uh, entry. Yeah, it's called a dual entry plug. So I found one of those online and uh, let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna hide this original one now and show you what my new slim version looks like. So I just took the CAD and um, I trimmed the part a little bit down um, because it's a semi-editable part. And on the back side here we've got a uh, connector. So let's see if I can get this to rebuild. So that's the thinner version. So quite a bit thinner. It's uh, five, five millimeters thinner than the um, the original design. I think that ends up looking pretty pretty decent. Uh, not quite as ugly. Um, so if we take a look at how I did that, I took the connector that was right here and I put it on the other side of the board. And to do that, I'm using this part here. Uh, so this is from Gradcon, and it's a connector that allows uh, putting the pins in from the bottom or the top. Dual entry, it's called. So I can think I can find a picture of what that looks like in here. So you can you can enter from uh, the bottom or from the top side. So we're gonna leverage the idea of, of being able to stick the pins through the through the, the bottom side. So take a look at how I did that. So you, we would mount this connector on the back side and then on this board there'd be through holes for each of the pins for the analog. And uh, that might just work. So that is the power, I guess, of uh, making all of this this CAD available available to the community, so that we can lend some input and uh, you know get this thing just the way that we need it to be. I'm really excited for this goggle. <laughs> it's going to be great. Have fun uh, tinkering with the files yourself. Again, those files are posted on Thingiverse, and I'll have a description. I'll have a link to the Thingiverse in my uh, video description. What do you guys think of this approach? Is this awesome? Or, I don't know, is, is there some other feeling that you have when you, when you see that uh, manufacturers willing to give us the, the, the CAD files uh, for, for our next goggle? I think it's pretty cool. I think a lot of cool stuff's going to happen from it. So can't wait.